my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have some romance recommendations where one of the main characters is an author or a writer. I love reading these romances so much because I love any books that incorporate writing or reading or books in them as a book lover myself, so I really appreciate these romances. The majority of these are contemporary romances and you also have, I think, I think I have a monster romance in here as well as a few historicals. So let's get started. The first one that I have is Isn't It Romantic by Alyssa K. Adams. Literally, Vlad is writing on the cover. Vlad is our main character in here. This is also book four, I want to say, in the Romance Book Club series. Um, I read this one. It's kind of like a standalone. I've only read book one and then I jumped to book four and I was totally fine. Okay, so each book in the series is centered around a guy who is a part of the Bromance Book Club, which is a book club about like filled with guys who read romance books to learn more about women. Okay, so Vlad in here is actually married, but he does not live with his wife. He hasn't seen his wife in a while. His wife is his childhood best friend from Russia. They got in a marriage of convenience of sorts because Vlad got accepted to play hockey in America. He is a professional hockey player in America. Elena really wanted to go to school in America. So their parents like are like, how about y'all get married? So she can basically get a student visa and like can get a green card to go to school in the US. They agree they've been married for a little bit, but as he's spending more time in this book club, he's realizing I want this relationship with my wife to be real. At the beginning of this book, he confronts Elena and is like, I want this to work. But at the same time, Elena tells him like, I want to go back to Russia. So how is that going to work? Then Vlad gets injured in a hockey game and Elena is the only one that's really available to come take care of him while he is injured and basically bedridden in his home. Their forced proximity and the fact that they're living together um, <laughs> definitely has them confronting their feelings and getting in some tension filled moments. Vlad in this book is obviously reading a lot of romance books, but he actually wants to write one. So he's been trying to write one. And like, these are all of his notes that he has like around him, like while writing his book. And he is so cute. And I love how passionate he is about writing. And like, literally I think one of his friends is starting to like poke fun at him and make fun of him for writing, wanting to write a romance book. And he's just like, no, like, no, shut your mouth. This is what I'm passionate about and it's important. Stop being a misogynistic jerk. And yes, I love to see it, Vlad. A very, very chili pepper filled novella is Go Deep by Rilsley Adams. We have another main character in here who is a romance author. Um, Nevea is a hot author, if you will. And she's been getting some reviews on some of her books saying that her most recent releases haven't been the hottest things ever, which she cannot blame because she caught her ex like cheating on her about a year ago and her books haven't really like felt the best since that point, you know what I mean? Then she reaches out to her best friend Xander and is like, can we get in like a beneficial situation where I can do stuff with you? So it will inspire me to get hot with my books. He at first reluctantly agrees, <laughs> but he'll do anything for his best friend. And while they're together, they end up realizing like, oh my gosh, we are like perfect together. Why have we never seen this? So this is just a hot friends to lovers novella that I totally recommend. I love the fact that she was trying to like get inspiration to help her write books. Like, yes. One Hot Italian Summer is one that I really enjoyed this year. And our heroine in here was actually a part of our author duo, but uh, her writing partner ended up passing away. And so she's dealing with a lot of grief of losing your partner and your best friend. Like, what do you do? Like, how do you move on? And she's struggling to write by herself now. Her manager tells her like, I know you've been dealing with writer's block. I have a villa in Italy. How about you go visit there? Because she's in doom and gloom like Edinburgh, where it's not really sunny, you know what I mean? So she visits the villa, is gonna sit there for a little bit to hopefully write and get over her writer's block. But her manager didn't tell her that this villa was not only owned by her, it was owned by her ex-husband and his kid is with them too. So she's a very embarrassed at first when they see each other. She's like, I didn't know anybody lived here. And he's like, it's fine, you can stay here for as long as you need, it's totally fine. So it's a forced proximity relationship as well because they live in the same house and it's forbidden because that's her manager's ex-husband and her kid that she's living with. I love 
the artistry that Karina Halley put in this book. Our heroine is writing a lot in this book, is finding a lot of inspiration with her new relationship that she's finding with her manager's ex. <laughs> but then also said ex is an artist himself. He's a sculptor and like ugh, the sculpting scenes in here, like he gets so much inspiration from our heroine and it's like, has her model for him and oh my gosh, I was a puddle on the floor for that. Undone by the ex-con by Tali Hibbert is another one that has this trope in it. This is about Lizzie and Isaac. Lizzie, a few years ago, I wanna say, was diagnosed with type one diabetes. She was a ballerina and her diagnosis kind of changed her life. Like it happens to a lot of us who are chronically ill and she's no longer able to become a, like be able to be a ballerina. So she decides to teach dance instead. She ends up working for this very rich family that have uh, little girls and she teaches little girls how to dance. But then their dad ends up bringing her into his office one day and basically blackmails her. And it's like, I have this client named Isaac who is an ex-con and he ended up writing about his whole experience about being an ex-con and his book is kind of like blown up essentially. And he wants Lizzie to get close to him and basically feed him information about Isaac. He is blackmailing her though and has some not safe for work pictures um, involving her brother and someone her brother is with and she doesn't want that to get out into the world and ruin her brother's life. So she has to agree. But as she gets closer to Isaac, she ends up actually falling for him. Things get very complicated to say the least. Isaac in here is an author. He wrote the book that I talked about and it's just an interesting take on having a character who is an author because I don't think I've ever read a book about an ex-con and what it's like to live that life. I thought that was such an interesting premise. Next, I have one from the queen, Brittany Cherry. This is Southern Storms. This one is about Jax and Kennedy. Kennedy is going through a lot of things with her marriage, very, very hard things. And her marriage is basically like, done over with and she winds up on her estranged sister's doorstep asking for help her sister welcomes her in with open arms um but it's basically like i'm going on my honeymoon soon like i can totally cancel it because i want to stay with you and she's like no no no, go on your honeymoon i'll stay at one of their rental properties that they have in this small town um until you come back so that's what she does she stays on the, one of their rental properties because her sister and her husband basically rent out houses and there she meets Jax, who is her neighbor, lives in the same neighborhood as her. They don't get off on the right foot. He's very grumpy and takes it out on Kennedy. And then they realize that they know each other before. They actually were childhood best friends at summer camp. They haven't seen each other in years. But Jax doesn't really want to get to know Kennedy again because he's going through his own things in his life and doesn't need another distraction or so he says. But he obviously cannot help himself. <laughs> Kennedy in here is our character who is an author. I think Brittany has written a few characters, main characters that have romance author heroines and she does them so well because it's Brittany Cherry, she just does them so well. Next, I have Glitterland by Alexis Hall. This was one of our Chronically Courageous book club picks in 2023. Brie and I really enjoyed reading this one together. Brie has read a lot of Alexis Hall books and she said that this is probably the darkest one he's written. So please be aware that there's a lot of sugar warnings. Like I have a whole list on my Goodreads review if you wanna check that out, if you wanna know all the trigger warnings. Ash in here is our character who is a pulp crime. Yeah, pulp crime fiction author, um, but he's also dealing with depression. He's kind of given up on life and given up on writing um, until he bumps into Darian at a club who is just the sunshine of sunshines. He is the complete total opposite to doom and gloom Ash and he makes Ash laugh, which no one's really been able to do that for him in a very long time. And this is their very complicated emotional relationship. If you're wanting a hard hitting read, definitely pick this one up. I talk about this book a lot, but it has a lot of amazing tropes. This is His Darkest Craving by Tiffany Roberts. This is a shadow entity monster romance. Sophie is our heroine and she is an author. She's wanting to work on her writing. So she ends up renting a cabin on the edge of these very mysterious woods. And uh, she doesn't know that the woods are inhabited by Cruz, who is this shadow entity demon up here. This is Cruz in his like physical form, but he could only go in like once a year. Anyway, so the shadow entity hates humans. He absolutely hates them. And he sneaks into Sophie's room at night when she's sleeping and he's intending on killing her, but he cannot. 
he's like looming over her and he can't do it. And he's like, why can't I kill this woman? What is going on? And he ends up falling for her while he's like essentially stalking her and watching her. Sophie can feel that eyes are watching her, but she doesn't know what is going on. She can't see anybody watching her. So she thinks she's kind of going crazy, but she's not. You wouldn't think that a shadow entity demon romance would be hot. It is, it is okay. Um, but yeah, Sophie in here is an author and I love that aspect in here so much. One of the top three favorite books of the year for me is Lady Ruthless by Scarlett Scott. Like, I love this book. And the writer aspect in here is so funny to me. Lady Callie is our author in here and she believes that the hero of this book, Lord Sinclair, is at fault for her brother's death. So she ends up creating a persona, if you will, and starts writing articles in the newspaper as Lord Sin, telling everybody about his debauched acts and sinful ways. And it basically ruins the real Lord Sinclair and like ruins his reputation where no like high respecting lady will marry him. And he is pissed. He ends up tracking down who the author is, finds out it's Lady Callie and decides to kidnap her. And it's like, you ruined all my chances of finding a wife. So as payment, you're gonna marry me instead. So he basically is keeping her locked in this room until she agrees to marry him. I love this book so much. And the writer aspect in here really reminded me of the la of Lady Whistledown, um, but definitely more revenge filled. <laughs> Speaking of Lady Whistledown, I would love to mention romancing Mr. Bridgerton by Julia Quinn. I'm not gonna say what the writing aspect is in here because I don't want to spoil it unless you've never read or watched Bridgerton, but it involves Lady Whistledown, okay? Heavy emphasis on Lady Whistledown in this book, okay? But yeah, this is Colin and Penelope's book. I enjoyed this book, but I think I'll definitely like the show more, but like the Lady Whistledown concept in this book is absolutely iconic, I had to mention it. And the last one that I have to mention, I love because we have a secret author. This is Up All Night with a Good Duke by Amy Rose Bennett. Artemis is a finishing school teacher a very respectful finishing school teacher, but no one knows that she is secretly a gothic romance writer. That's like her alter ego, if you will. Dominic is a duke and he ends up catching his teenage, young teenage daughter with one of like the heroine's like pen name books. And he is scandalized. He's like, my daughter should not be reading this. He goes to the bookstore to try and find a new, more appropriate book for her and ends up bumping into Artemis at the bookstore. Long story short, the two of them have to get in a marriage of convenience for certain reasons. I can't say why, but I loved the secret author aspect of this book. Like it was so entertaining to read about. Anyways, there you have it. Those are 10 romance recommendations with an author or a writer. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me the pencil emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.